hi all my friends out there. Um, <laughs> I'm doing fine. Everything is okay. And uh, I'm not upset. <laughs> I might be a little preoccupied sometimes, you know. I'm thinking of other things and so therefore I, I, I may look like I am, but I'm really not. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, of course, a psychologist would say, oh, you're fine, are you? Here, sit down. <laughs> Uh, but that's why I have the Bible, and that's why I have God, because God will help me through anything. And um, <clears throat> uh, speaking of that, uh, my very good friend, who I adore, is AM, uh, and um, she told me yesterday in passing that uh, she's um, doing Bible study, and she's studying from Beth Moore's Bible study, um, what do you call it, um, books and things like that, I guess. And um, so I looked her up, <laughs> and um, she's she is a firecracker, AM. <laughs> and I really like her. Um, and so I, I listened to several of her uh, messages last night. And one had to do with the book of Samuel. <laughs> um, isn't the Lord just great how he works? I just love it. And um, anyway, he, she was talking about how uh, the Lord, you know, we're, we're to take our example from Christ, okay? And how he uh, found uh, Philip and how he found James and you know how he found the disciples okay and the key word here is found all right um, and um, if you recall in first Samuel where uh, Samuel was a little boy living with Eli Eli was he's going to be his mentor okay um, gonna raise him up to be a prophet and Samuel is laying down, uh, gone to sleep. He's in the he's in a chapel. He's in a very blah place, but he's laying at the altar of God. Okay, the the um, the uh, Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> okay, and when you and I go to sleep at night, God doesn't sleep. She's she's saying okay, he's watching us, and we are laying down at the altar of God. I thought that was great. Uh, this is brilliant. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, so you know the story. As Samuel hears his name, and he runs up, goes to Eli, and says, you, you, you called me, Master? You called me? And he's in the first time, he's, Eli says, no, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And then he hears it again. He runs in, and he says, you called me, Master? And he says, no, son, I didn't call you. And he calls him son. He's being very, uh, you know, lo loving and endearing. And he calls him son. No, son, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And a uh, third time, he runs in. You know, Master, you, I, you called me. I heard you call me. He goes, oh. <laughs> the Lord called you. Go back to bed. And when he calls you again, say, uh, Yes, ma ma uh, I am. I'm here, Master. Your, uh, 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 here am I, your servant. Okay, I'm here, and um, and then sure enough, the Lord says to His name twice. Okay, so even though I'm reading the the Bible to you, every word counts. Okay, G Jesus. God knew you before you were born. He called you. He found you. Okay? Then you found him. You discovered him. So Beth Moore's thing was that we're not to go and confront people and go, your religion is wrong, you're wrong, you know, you're, you're doing the wrong thing. You got to come and, you know, you, you, you know, the Bible says this, you know, and you're confronting people. No, you just say, come, come and see. 
Come and see what I'm talking about. Come and see. Come see your, for yourself. And then that's the end of your responsibility. You let God take over and let him do the work. All you need to do is go find and, you know, talk to people, get engaged. And if they ask you, boy, you, you know, you seem like you really got it all together or you, you know, whatever. well, c come and see, come and see what I've been doing. That's it. You know, we use Jesus as our role model. And if you want to change the world, you want to revolutionize the world. You want to, you know, the world's in a terrible place. People are saying it every day. They're going crazy. They want to bomb everybody. <laughs> Remember, God loves us all. And trust me, I, uh, um, I, I had this, I, I don't even want to go into the drink, but if I saw something horrible going on, especially like, uh, a rape or something like that, okay? That, you know, a murder, a rape, with something, you know, terrible like that happening. I, I there's just, this is a true thing that happened. I was in Seattle, I was with Juliana, we were walking on the beach, and I saw at least five young men beating up a homeless man, okay? I, I Juliana couldn't hear what was going on, but I could hear, and I ran over to the guy and I start yelling at them saying shame on you you know several times get out of here shame on you for doing that and um, I, I was even more stronger than I'm sounding right now okay I was really furious and the man was bloodied and I um, at that time <clears throat> And I didn't, um, I said I was going to go get him some help, which I did. And I ran after these guys. They went all the way up the steps. Uh, it was by the fish market, you know, downtown Seattle. And they they took off. They kept looking back and I go, you come back here and I'm going to beat the crap out of you. You know? <laughs> I was so mad. Man, I was like, how dare you do that to another individual? To a homeless guy, what the heck is wrong with you? You know, I was so so mad. I went and found a cop. He took me around Seattle. We were looking for these guys. Okay, I probably should have been a cop. Anyway, I didn't find him, but I went back to get to see the you know to try to help the homeless man. He and he was gone. So I don't know what that was all about. But I'm telling you, if I, if I saw anything, if I had a gun on me, I would. You know, my first instinct would be boom, 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 you know. But that's not what God wants because why? God loves them too. God loves them too. Every single one of us. He loves us. All of us poor creatures, you know. We, we have a spirit inside of us and a soul in this tent that we live in, Okay. And we are made in the image of God. And he wants to have a personal relationship with us. He made the angels a little lower than us. Okay, even though they have all these wonderful um, uh, attributes and, and gifts and things that we can't do, he, um, or he made us a little lower than the angels. Or yeah, okay, and so, but you know, they're, they if God said to them, "Love me," they would say, "Yes, Lord, we love you," you know, <laughs> because they're they're uh, not quite sure what they're they're not like robots or anything but that that that's what they're made to do for lack of the language I don't have to explain it so that's why he gave us free will okay 
We can choose to love him or we can choose not to. We can choose to acknowledge him or we can choose not to. Or we can choose to go even the worst opposite and worship Satan and the angels who decided to just leave their realm, their heavenly realm, and do whatever they wanted to do. But God uses it for his glory, okay? And so with us, he wants to have a personal relationship, a give and take. He makes a move, we make a move, you know? And <clears throat> it starts by listening to him, waiting for him, on him, read, reading your Bible, getting to know him personally, who he is. Because one of the things that I don't want to have happen is for him to say, I never knew you. Who are you? I don't know you. You know? Oh, that would be crushing. I mean, I, I that would be horrible. That's like the worst thing. I don't want to hear that. You know? So, <clears throat> I each day try to get to know who he is. And I am constantly waiting and listening for him to speak to me. And sometimes he does, sometimes not. Um, because I haven't made a move yet or something. <laughs> you know, I'm still figuring it out, okay? I'm with you guys, okay? I'm still working on it as well. And I'm not going to have time to really finish this chapter, but I, I want to at least get started on it, okay? So we're in, <clears throat> sorry, chapter 20. I've been singing too much. My throat's gone. <laughs> Um, chapter 22, David's Psalm of Thanksgiving. Wasn't that really good? Oh, I just love that. Man, that was just so unbelievable. That um, He's such a good writer, David. My goodness. Uh, wow. And the thing is, the Word of God... I think I'll just wait to the next video. I'll do it right quick. Uh, the Word of God is living and breathing. Okay, it, ne it the God's Word when it when it went out from Him into the people who wrote the, these words down, it doesn't ever come back void. It's it's living and breathing. The whole world is was formed from His voice. Okay, from his word, let there be light. Okay, and who is light? God is light. When we have the new heaven and new earth, there's not going to be a sun because the sun and light is going to emanate from God, from Jesus himself, from everything that he's made. When you listen to near-death uh, experiences, they say even that light comes up through the grass and light comes through everything. And the base of, of, of the new Jerusalem is, is like a rainbow, okay? Which I thought that was really cool, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and light just comes, comes through everything. Uh, his, it's, we don't need a sun. And anyway, I just... So God's word is living and breathing continuously. And when we read it, we are getting life from God and light. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop right there. Uh, we'll continue with chapter 23. Okay, see you soon. Bye.